What is up you guys? It is Geography Joe coming at you with a brand new geography video. Now today we are going to be talking about something that no one on earth has ever heard of or talked about before and that is coronavirus. Now what are we talking about? Because coronavirus has basically hit every single country, every single state of each country. I mean it's it's spread like wildfire throughout the entire globe. The most recent countries to uh, get their first reported cases I believe are Yemen and Tajikistan. Uh, but there are still some countries, in fact, there's about 10 independent countries that have yet to report a single case of coronavirus. Now, for some of these, that's obviously not true, but we can't say obviously, so we assume it isn't true. But still, I'm going to report to you what we know about these countries, what we know about their cases, and we're going to go in order of population, so we're going to just get right into it, starting with North Korea. So North Korea is a very famously isolated and repressive country. It is a obviously a dictatorship run by the Kim family for the last ever since it's been a country and nobody is really ever allowed in or out of the country, you know, regardless of there being a global pandemic. So, you know, it's not exactly shocking to hear that North Korea hasn't reported a case. However, it is pretty much known by the international community that North Korea has a case of coronavirus because First of all, it does 90 plus percent of its trade and travel internationally, like its citizens travel internationally to China almost entirely and exclusively. Almost all of the trade is done with China. China basically is the, you know, thing that props North Korea's government up and allows it to financially do what it does without having any globalized sort of economy. Because you have to remember North Korea is basically the only country in the world that refuses to join one of the only countries in the world left that refuses to join globalization and that has significantly hindered its economy and ability to grow as a nation. But in this case, it's keeping it free of COVID-19. Or is it? Because U.S. intelligence officials who are based in Seoul, South Korea, have said that there is no possible way that North Korea has not gotten the virus because smuggling through the Chinese border is one of the biggest ways that the country imports any of its goods. Uh, people are still traveling, diplomats from the country are still traveling across the world uh, as late as March, I believe. And it is said, now I don't know if this is true because you can't really trust any sources about North Korea, but one source did say that North Korean officials have literally told the citizens of the country that coronavirus is in the country, but they refuse to give any sort of numbers or details. And they're still holding out to the international community that they don't have any cases. Whether or not this is true, we have no way of knowing. The odds of them reporting an official case are pretty much slim to none because they honestly, they're more likely to just try and save face and say, we didn't get it, haha, uh -huh, you know, than they are to actually ask for help with it because that's kind of just the way North Korea rolls. So, yeah, um, so it's basically, it's been said that it's utterly impossible that the country has no cases and they are pretty much known to be lying. So anyway, moving on to the second most populated country in the world that does not have a reported case of coronavirus, Turkmenistan. Now Turkmenistan is a pretty also very isolated and re repressive dictatorship, closed off country. Only about 4,000 people travel into the country on a yearly basis. It is one of the world's least visited countries, especially on a per capita basis, you know, cause like there are some countries with like 10,000 people that only get 200 visitors a year, but this is a country of 5 million people that only gets 4,000 a year. So like, you know, the, the ratio is a little off there. Anyway, the country is still officially claiming that it has not received one case of coronavirus. Uh, purposely, the country is postponing visits from the World Health Organization, who has recently been deployed into Tajikistan, which is a country that very, very recently reported its first case. But the odds of Turkmenistan truly not having any cases is quite slim because neighboring Kazakhstan has about, I want to say 4,000, Uzbekistan is up to like 20,000, Afghanistan has like six, and I Iran is one of the world's epicenters for the virus with like, I think, you know, I, I, let me just go check right here. Uh, Iran has over 100,000 cases within its borders. The odds of none of those people giving it to Turkmenistan, I mean, seriously, if you just coughed over the border into Ashgabat, I mean, the odds of coronavirus getting there are pretty much, you know, it's just like it, they definitely have it. And, <clears throat> and now, so people who were visiting into Turkmenistan, like, like Turkmen nationals or citizens who were coming back to the country after the country sort of locked all of its stuff down, which was in, I want to say, uh, well, gee whiz, I have it written right here. Um, 
Yeah, it was so okay. Okay, so it was believable that the country had no cases prior to about April 29th, but on that date, Turkmenistan, I mean, Tajikistan reported its first cases, and then within a few days, it was up to 500 cases in Tajikistan, and it's like, you know, just like in any other, other country, it's spreading like wildfire. And uh, in February, Turkmenistan and Tajikistan both reported a very high increase in pneumonia related deaths. Um, Naturally, we are left to assume that it wasn't pneumonia after all, but COVID-19 managed to make its way into the countries and they just either were reporting it falsely or they weren't even aware that it was coronavirus. Uh, but what we do know is that quarantine camps have been established for diplomats in the cap in not the capital city, but this city known as Turkmenabat, which is in the eastern uh, what is this province called? I don't remember. I didn't write it down, but it's in like, it's in the Eastern province. This is a very, very, very sparsely populated region of the country. And they are putting all people who need to be quarantined in there. And uh, a website called, this is important. So a website called the Chronica Turkmenistana, which is, which is run by people who have defected from Turkmenistan. So basically citizens that have escaped the country to, live somewhere else because of the repressive nature of the government of the country, you know? People who people who run this website have reported that there are seven cases of coronavirus within these quarantine camps in Turkmenabat. And if they're, you know, to be believed, then Turkmenistan is without a doubt lying about not having ter uh, coronavirus. And that would make a lot of sense because you can't really trust the government of this country. It's a very, very repressive state. And the country is ruled by an absolute dictator. And if I'm not mistaken, which I could be, it's had the same president since, since its independence from the Soviet Union in 1991, which is just very simply a sign of corruption in the government if the same person has been in power for nearly 30 years. So anyway, moving on to the next country. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, just, just before I leave Turkmenistan, we just have to remember that they are literally denying entry from the World Health Organization. They're saying, no, no, don't visit. Like, we got this. We don't have any cases. We're fine. We're fine. Don't visit. Don't visit. Which is pretty much the most suspicious thing you can do. So anyway, we're going to move on to Lesotho. So as most people know, Lesotho is the hole in South Africa. It is one of three countries entirely surrounded by another country. And interestingly enough, the other two countries are San Marino and Vatican City, both surrounded by Italy. And both, if you look at this, have the most cases per 1 million people of any country in the world because San Marino only has a population of about 35,000 and they have 650 cases, which means that they have uh, almost 20,000 cases per 1,000 people. I mean, 1 million people, which is the highest in the world by far too, like by a wide margin. Because honestly, guys, Vatican City is not a real country. All right, let's, let's just, I'm going to put that out there. It's my opinion. It's, it's not a real country. But anyway, Lesotho. So up until literally yesterday, Lesotho was the only country in Africa to have not reported a single case of coronavirus. But yesterday, they actually confirmed their first positive case. So this took Lesotho off the list of countries that have managed to avoid the virus, which is interesting because you would really just you would expect it to be like the Seychelles or, you know, Sao Tome and Principe to not to be the last African country to get one or even like the Gambia. But nope, it was little tiny Lesotho. And good for them, I guess, until yesterday. Um, yeah, so, I mean, technically I'm not allowed to talk about them because they have it. So, moving on. Next country, in fact, all of the next countries are in the South Pacific Ocean. So, before I pick on a specific example, for those of you who aren't very familiar with this region of the world, it is the most isolated place in the world, obviously. It is literally like these are these are some microscopic little islands in the middle of the ocean. I mean, you click on the countries and you don't even see land. You have to like zoom all the way in. And then and then what do you know? There are like towns on these tiny islands. It's, it's the most fascinating yet bizarre thing. Uh, you got a lot of U.S. territories down here. Oh, my dogs are barking. You got a couple of British territories, a couple of French territories over here. Actually, you only have one British territory. And um, so we're going to start with. Uh, the Solomon Islands because it is the most populated Pacific Island nation to not report a case yet. Now the thing with the Solomon Islands is that they haven't reported any direct cases of coronavirus, but they do have about 270 deaths linked to the pandemic. And this is because 
Uh, the capital city of the Solomon Islands is Honiara, and the co- uh, population of the town of Honiara is only about 90,000, but the, co- the country itself is home to about 650,000 people, and a lot of people were uh, trapped on, in, Honiara, in Honiara, or is it Honiara? I, I don't really know, but a lot of people were trapped there, and they needed to get home to their other islands within the country, and the prime minister ordered the, this to happen so he was like people need to get on ships and they need to get back to their islands like we're doing this now 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 and one of these ships was hit by a cyclone cyclone herald and the ship had i believe uh well i have it written right here the ship had 60 passengers and 27 of them died because the ship you know sank um so basically in prevention of letting coronavirus into their country they have indirectly caused 27 of their own citizens to die, which is really unfortunate. Um, so I guess you could just say the Solomon Islands is the only country in the world to indirectly have deaths linked to the coronavirus. Um, but if we're going to move on to the next country, Vanuatu. Now, Cyclone Herald is going to be a recurring theme in this part of the video because Cyclone Herald did a lot of damage to a lot of these countries. It started off in the Solomon Islands and it sort of like went southeast into Fiji, Tonga, Vanuatu, New Caledonia, Wallace and Fatuna, and Tuvalu. Uh, it did a lot of damage in these countries, but the most hard hit one was Vanuatu. Of the 300,000 people that live in Vanuatu, 160,000 of them had their homes either completely destroyed or partially destroyed. And the most hard hit islands, um, ah, I forget their names, but like, I want to say it was this one, this one up here, right? Yeah, it was. It was Espiritu Santo, or as it's locally referred to, just Santo. But this island was hit really, really hard. And the thing is, usually when a cyclone hits these far-flung Pacific Island nations, countries like China, Australia, New Zealand, they'll send foreign aid workers to come in and help with the repairs. But these countries are not letting anyone in, like, because they, they don't have the coronavirus yet, and obviously they don't want it. So they're not letting any foreign visitors come to the country whatsoever, no exceptions. So the country is literally just, like, dealing with this, with this, like, hurricane katrina level catastrophe while the entire world is dealing with you know a a black plague level catastrophe and it's just like it's it's uh the the prime minister or maybe it was just some journalist from vanuatu but they described it as like a catastrophe within a disaster within a dilemma it was some like stronger word to emphasize problem but like it's really this is a seriously bad situation for vanuatu and um like i wrote some other notes here let's just see if i forgot anything yeah, so the country effectively closed itself off in March, but this this uh, this hurricane or, or cyclone, I guess, as it's called in this region of the world, was it hit like a week ago, and so New Zealand, I mean, even the the goods and resources that are being shipped into the country from Australia, New Zealand, are being put on three day quarantine bef- and being disinfected before they can even be used. So it's just this dire situation of like. People are hiding in these like basically refugee camps that are like makeshift from where social distancing is impossible from the, oh, it's just, it's just not good. And then we're going to, we're going to move on to the next country though, before, you know, before I lose track of what I'm talking about. Uh, Next one is Samoa. Oh, here it is. Silly me. So Samoa is a independent nation. A lot of Americans know American Samoa, but Samoa is the independent country to the immediate west of American Samoa. It has about 200,000 residents, and <clears throat> travel to Samoa has been very, very restricted ever since this whole thing started. The prime minister basically did not take any risks in letting coronavirus hit his already isolated and small island nation. Many of these island nations, by the way, guys, you have to remember, don't have the healthcare facilities or the resources to deal with a pandemic in their country. So the best thing they can possibly do right now is avoid letting it get there. And so that's what a lot of these countries are being forced to do. So the first suspected case in Samoa happened on March 18th, and it was confirmed negative weeks later when the person was shipped to New Zealand to be tested. And I think they've tested about uh, 15 more people. They've all come back negative. So Samoa's prime minister said those who don't adhere to the COVID-19 social distancing and travel restrictions, which he hasn't placed on his citizens, uh, they will be fined, and New Zealand, as a <laughs> interestingly, has estimated that about 300 Samoan residents have been uh, put under arrest simply for like not 
adhering to social distancing rules. So in a country like America, you know, you've heard about people, uh, people in parks being stopped by police officers and being told, go home or disperse. Well, in Samoa, you have 300 people who are literally being, who literally have been arrested for not following those rules. And by the way, this is in a country with only 200,000 people. So 300 people is a lot <laughs> for them. And yeah, so uh, moving on to our next country. Actually, no, before I do that, let's just talk about American Samoa because it's the only place in the United States that has yet to report a single case of coronavirus. American Samoa only has about 55,000 people in it and it only gets about 20,000 international visitors per year. So it was pretty easy for the territory to close off its borders. Um, but regardless of this, it, it has tested about 15, 20 people, I believe, and they've all come back negative. The country has completely closed off its borders and is only letting like one flight in, I think, from Hawaii for goods because, again, you know, it's American. So Hawaii is its closest. It's the closest America to American Samoa for I don't really the fact that we even own American Samoa is just bizarre. Like, I know the people here are only considered to be nationals. So, like, they can, but they can, like, join the military, but they can't, like, run for president or something. It's, like, really bizarre how they, uh, how they're considered part of America in general. But anyway, we're going to move on to our next country, which is Kiribati. Yes, it's Kiribati, not Kiribati. It is spelled Kiribati, but in the I Kiribati language, the TI sound, the TI letters make an S sound because they don't have the letter S. Uh, really interesting stuff right there. But yeah. Uh, Kiribati is a super, super, super duper spread out nation. I mean, if you, you look at the, you see the way the international dateline juts out right here, that's literally Kiribati's water. Uh, so I'm trying, I like can't even find any islands of it right now. Like literally there's Papette. That's, that's the capital of French Polynesia. Howland Island, Baker Island. Here, here we go. Here we go. We got, I found one island. Thank God. Oh, okay. Nobody lives here. Anyway, uh, Kiribati. So we're, <laughs> that's, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um, so anyway, we're now moving on to the point where it is getting kind of redundant to talk about what each individual country has, has done uh, in response to closing down their borders and getting coronavirus out of their country. So Kiribati has basically closed down the borders. Visas have been put on hold. A state of emergency was declared on March 28th and Moving on to the next country. By the way, Kiribati has a population of about uh, 110,000. It is supposedly one of the first countries to disappear when the sea levels inevitably rise. So for the last 10 years or so, they've been mostly concerned about that. But now they're really concerned about this pandemic because if it gets into their country, there's no telling what it can do to their health services and their economy. And, and it's, I mean, these are mostly countries that don't rely on tourism much at all. So the fact that their borders are closed really aren't, isn't doing too much damage to most of these countries with one exception that I'll get into later. But yeah, so anyway, the next country we're going to talk about is the Federated States of Micronesia, a country of about 100,000 people. This is the largest associated state of the United States, which means that its citizens can freely move within the United States and become citizens of the United States without having to do any sort of paperwork. They're basically like quasi citizens from birth. If they're a resident of Micronesia, the country has about 110,000 people, and much like Kiribati, the islands are extremely spread out from each other. There are about three groups of islands, and the main island has the capital city of Palakur. Pompeii. It's called Pompeii. That's right. There's Palakur. Okay, cool. So that's the capital city. What is that? Madolenum? I have no idea how you would possibly say that. Anyways, Federated States of Micronesia, very small, very isolated country. Not a lot of tourists visit this place at all but it banned its citizens from leaving the country on February 3rd, which was one of the first countries to actually do this, to ban its own citizens from leaving the country. And, you know, because February 3rd, that's pretty early. Like, they were way ahead of the game there. Good for them. And strict, strict travel bans were even further imposed on March 5th. So anyway, we're going to move to the next country. We've got the independent island kingdom of Tonga. Tonga is a kingdom in the South Pacific Ocean. It is a very, very heavily Christian country, and it has a little over 100,000 people in it. It's, it's a, lot, a lot of spread out islands, but it's not quite as spread out as the other countries. Uh, the islands do seem to have at least a little bit more uniformity in where they're located, in relevance, or in relation to each other. But yeah, Tonga uh, is a very, it kind of is a country that like relies a little more on tourism than the other countries. It's still one of the least visited countries in the world, but you know, it's got a tour. It's got more tourism infrastructure than most of these other countries do. 
they don't have any cases, but all travel has been banned, and the country was actually put on a, on a strict lockdown between March 25th and April 5th. I don't really know what this lockdown was supposed to do because the country already had no cases, uh, but I do believe that the only thing open in the country right now is churches because it, again, is an incredibly religious place. And yeah, so Tonga. Tonga, 100,000 people. Next country we're going to talk about is the Marshall Islands, another freely associated state of the United States. This country only has about 57,000 people, and it is the seventh least populated country in the world. I think it's also the seventh smallest by land area, but that I'm not as sure about. It's definitely like bottom 10 in land area, but this is a very, very small country. Uh, I mean, like, look at it. Like, these are these islands are hardly even islands. There's Kwajalein. It's kind of this this country is a little famous for a bikini atoll, which is the namesake of Bikini Bottom, and of course the site of where the atomic bombs were dropped during World War II. Like we we use the Marshall Islands to sort of like test our nukes on their islands, which was like, you know, we like evacuated everyone off of I think it was called like Iwakojin. I don't remember. These islands have like pretty pretty tricky names, if I do say so myself. But moving on, the Marshall Islands. On January 24th, banned all travel from infected countries, which at that point was literally like Italy, Iran, China, and South Korea. So on January 24th, it banned travel from all of those countries. And today, uh, all international travel is banned from the Marshall Islands uh, as of March 18th. They have banned all of it. No international travel whatsoever. Not even to, to your buddies in Micronesia, you know? Tough tough luck. You're not getting, You're not getting in, you're not getting out. And the next country we're going to talk about is similar to the Marshall Islands. It is Palau. Now, Palau is the fourth least populated country in the world. It only has about 20,000 people in it. And it is the last of the three associated states of the United States. However, the difference between Palau and the other two is that Palau's economy is almost entirely dependent on tourism, mainly from Japan, Taiwan, the Philippines, slightly from Indonesia, some from Vietnam, some from China, South Korea, and even from Guam and the Northern Mariana Islands. Like people from America who want to visit Palau, they use Guam and the Northern Marianas as a stepping stone to get there. But yeah, Palau's economy is almost entirely dependent on tourism and they've had to shut their country completely down. And the president had a really hard time uh, making that decision because, you know, their country is totally financially dependent on the people that come to visit. But, you, you know, I mean, what are you going to do when the whole world is shut down and no one's leaving their house? You can't, you can't get tourists. So they, they've tested 31 of their residents. All of these tests have come back negative. They still have yet to confirm a, a positive case of coronavirus within their borders. Um, but schools and travel were completely banned on April 1st. And the president of the country has said that it is much more valuable to lose a little bit of your economy than it is to lose lives. And... It's, it's just like, you know, that's kind of what we're realizing the, the mantra of all global leaders has been recently. It's like, it's more important to shut down the economy and lose a bit of money than it is to lose actual human lives. So moving on to our last two independent nations, we have Tuvalu. Uh, where is Tuvalu? Tuvalu is like, you know, this isn't about me, but it's one of my favorite countries in the world. But yeah, Tuvalu is a country with about 11,000 people. This is the main atoll of Funafuti, which has the capital. I know it says Veaku, but the capital is actually called Funafuti. That is the name of this atoll. Uh, wow, there's a mosque in Tuvalu. I didn't really know that. So yeah, see Funafuti International Airport. So, so Tuvalu, uh, depending on the source that you ask, has about nine to 11,000 people. Uh, most sources will say it has about 11. But yeah, Tuvalu is, is the fourth smallest country by land area and some say the second or third smallest by population. So it's really not, it's also the least visited country in the world. And, and the only country that challenges any of the statistics I just said is Nauru. They think that Nauru might have less people, might have less tourists than Tuvalu, but basically they're, they're fighting for last place, you know? And, uh, oh, and of course the Vatican, but again, that's just not a real country. And yeah, so Tuvalu, um, they don't have any cases. They declared a state of emergency on March 26th, and on April 3rd, it was decided that all visitors have to spend 14 days of isolation in a third-party country. So this is, in Tuvalu's case, basically that means New Zealand, Fiji, or Australia. But yeah, so you can't currently enter Tuvalu without waiting two weeks in a different country. 
also, if you're not a Tuvaluan citizen, you're not getting there. So good luck. Uh, and we're going to move on to our last country, which is the t- tiny singular island nation of Nauru. This is one of the world's most incredibly bizarre countries. Everyone who knows Nauru knows at least a little bit of its weird, weird, quirky history. But yeah, basically, if you look at it, it's like literally this island is eight square miles. It's one island, the whole country. It has about 9,000 people. They don't even have an official capital city. They just say it's Yeren because that's where the government building is. I mean, it literally, like, move it 100 feet, it wouldn't even be in Yaren anymore. This is such a small country. But I digress. Nauru has, um, Nauru has suspended all of its flights from Australia and New Zealand, and I do believe it flew to Taiwan, but not anymore. Uh, I know that they are still allowing one flight in per week because the only way this country gets any of the resources it needs to, like, survive as a place is from Australia, so it still requires, uh, it's goods being transported in but they're only allowing one flight a week and all of the stuff being brought on those flights is being put under a 14-day quarantine along with all the people on those flights so the country is taking you know whatever measures it can because it does not it it literally this country has one hospital and that hospital would be overwhelmed if 10 people got coronavirus so they can't they can't take risks so anyway we're going to move on to now the non-sovereign places in the world that do not have the coronavirus. There are a few of these. Uh, The biggest example I'm going to start with is Svalbard. Svalbard is a territory of Norway, but it is kind of terra nullius in the way that you don't need to be from Norway to live here. There is no visa entry or no requirement to be here. So Svalbard is basically the, I mean, in a sense, it's basically the only like internationally owned piece of land in the world, unless you count Antarctica, but no one does because who cares about Antarctica? Uh, Svalbard is very isolated. It's mostly populated by Norwegians, but over here you have a place called Barentsburg, which is populated by Russians. Or is Barentsburg? I don't really know where Barentsburg is, but Longyearbyen is the capital. Oh, there it is. There's Barentsburg. See, so that's a Russian settlement. This is a Norwegian settlement. My point being, they don't have coronavirus yet. And um, yeah, so I mean, it's, it's, it's closed off its borders. No tourists have been allowed in for months. And it doesn't look like that's going to change anytime soon. I do know that their one bar, which is the northernmost bar in the entire world, fun fact, uh, just reopened, but only to locals. And it's like 10 people at most are allowed inside at a time. So it's kind of taking the same steps the rest of the world has been taking to avoid the spread, but also kind of reopen the economy at the same time. We'll see how that works. Only time will tell. Uh, This video, for all I know, this video will be outdated in a week. So... The next one is the British Indian Ocean Territory. Now, this is pretty much irrelevant because there is no permanent permanent population of the British Indian Ocean Territory. It basically exists for military purposes, uh, but they still haven't reported a case yet. So that's interesting. Uh, I really have nothing else to say about it. It's It's got no permanent population. It's not important. I already talked about American Samoa. Um, yeah, and then we're going to move on to the uh, overseas territories of Australia. There is Christmas Island, a very small island of about 2,000 people. Most of the island is a national park, give or take the coastline where people actually, you know, live, uh, and Flying Fish Cove, the capital. Christmas Island has yet to report a single case, but a lot of people from Australia who are uh, trying to get back into the country were put here for weeks and weeks, waiting to, you know, effectively to quarantine them away from the rest of Australia. And it was a big issue because there's already a detention center on this island, it's, which is already its own controversy. But they closed the detention center in 2018, and then they reopened it in 2019. And I think that's where they put the Australian citizens that were trying to get back to Australia. Uh, you know, look into it. Basically, Christmas Island doesn't have any cases at all. Uh, and simil- in the similar vein to Christmas Island, there are the Cocos Keeling Islands, which are over here. They only have about 600 people. However, these are like... These are like like native people. Like this is a real place. It's almost like a sovereign place. It's very remote. Um, there's literally I don't understand how this place would ever get the coronavirus. There's like no one goes here. No one leaves here. It's 600 people. I mean, it's just like the fa- it's almost like it's Australia's because no one even noticed it, let alone wanted it. Uh, maybe I'm generalizing a little, but I mean like seriously like if someone if the cocos islands end up getting coronavirus someone let me know okay uh next up we have norfolk island which is another territory of australia that i can't click on for some reason 
but yeah, this is Norfolk Island. This island down here, Phillip Island, is also included in Norfolk. They only have about 2,400 people. They're very isolated. They closed off their borders pretty much as soon as they could because they only have one hospital and it would be overwhelmed very quickly. Um, so we're going to move on to the next place, which is the Cook Islands. So for those of you that have never heard of the Cook Islands, they are an overseas territory of New Zealand. However, they are technically an independent country. They're just in the same way that Palau, Marshall Islands, and Micronesia are. They're associated freely with New Zealand. But the only difference between the Cook Islands and Niue, which is another state in free association with New Zealand over there, which I'll talk about in a second, the Cook Islands and Niue are not considered uh, independent sovereign places. They're considered territorial claimed, but they're, they're considered to be claimed by New Zealand. And New Zealand has said that if they want to be recognized as countries by the international community, they would lose their free association status, which is where it differs from the United States' situation. So basically, the Cook Islands have about 20,000 people. Uh, they closed their borders far, far ago, but they still are letting some flights in from New Zealand. However, it's not commercial or you know, touristy related. Same thing goes for Niue. The only difference between Niue and the Cook Islands is that the Cook Islands has about 25,000 people, whereas Niue only has 1,600 people. And Niue has significantly less visitors than the Cook Islands. Uh, last but not least, we have Tokilo, which is the last territory of New Zealand. This one is not a freely associated state. This is simply a territory of New Zealand, but they only have 1,400 people and Surprise, surprise, these three isolated atolls in the middle of nowhere don't have coronavirus. So uh, our next country is Wallace and Futuna, which is a overseas territory of France located, ooh, I know where it is, I know where it is, don't, come on guys. Oh, no, 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 that's, uh... oh geez, where is Wallace and Futuna? It's over here, yeah, 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 there it is, there it is, right by Fiji. So Wallace and Fatuna is basically the islands of Wallace and Fatuna. It's got about 14,000 people in it. It's an overseas territory of France. Um, they technically don't even have their own official flag, which is interesting, but they do have an unofficial flag. Anyway, uh, they began repatriating. So, so they really were like super on edge about the coronavirus. They didn't want it in their borders because while it is an overseas territory of France, it's pretty, you know, not it's not quite as developed as as france is you know it's an island in the middle of the pacific so they only really have a couple if if any i mean they have one or two hospitals at most for their fourteen thousand people again they would get overwhelmed very easily um so 300 of its citizens were stranded on new caledonia which is another french territory in the south pacific ocean right over here new caledonia has reported dozens of cases but anyway they began repatriating the 300 citizens stranded on, Wall on uh, New Caledonia in, on April 24th. As of May 6th, the, the territory has yet to report a single case, and it seems like it'll be that way for the foreseeable future unless they opened up their borders again, which I wouldn't recommend. Uh, last but not least, of course, we have the Pitcairn Islands, which if any of you know, the population of the Pitcairn Islands is literally 48 like, there are 48 people, that's it. And they live on this island, on Adamstown. And Adamstown is basically the island. So yeah, they're not they're not getting it. They pretty much have, like, one ship visit every two weeks. And as soon as the coronavirus started, they were like, yeah, cancel that. We're, they're, they're not coming. So they're fine. They'll, they'll be okay. I, I will be blown away if the Pitcairn Islands manages to get coronavirus. However, though, Easter Island, you know, of Chile actually did get coronavirus so anything's possible i guess but um we're gonna move on to the last few places we have now we have now discussed every single country and territory that does not have any cases of coronavirus however if you look at this there are a lot of places that have reported cases but they are no longer active uh mauritius would be the biggest example of this mauritius is a country in the middle of the indian ocean it has reported 322 cases all of these cases have recovered, except for, unfortunately, 10 deaths, but there are no active cases left in the country. So as far as Mauritius is concerned, they don't have the coronavirus anymore, but you can't really just assume that you don't have it anymore just because there are no active cases. There's probably cases that people aren't aware of somewhere on the island, and this is true for all these other countries I'm about to mention. So next up, we have Suriname, uh, a very, actually the smallest country in Central America. 
Suriname has reported 10 cases and one death. Now, do they still have coronavirus in their borders? Possibly. Possibly not. It's a very small country. They speak Dutch, which is kind of fun, you know? Like, Dutch, really? In South America? That's bizarre. But, uh, yeah, Suriname has reported, reportedly eradicated all of its cases. Next up, we have Anguilla, or Anguilla. I don't know how to say it, but it's, it's spelled Anguilla. Uh, they had about 10 cases that have all recovered. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. They had three. They had three cases that have all recovered. New Caledonia, by the way, uh, I take back what I said. They had 18 cases, all of which recovered. No deaths. Belize, a country, a country that is considered to be very Caribbean, even though it is on mainland Central America. Belize has reported 18 cases and two deaths, but they don't have any active cases at the moment. The Falkland Islands, which is, or uh, as the Argentinians would say, Islas Malvinas, uh, I'm not even going to get into that, but the Falkland Islands have reported 13 cases, zero deaths, no active cases remain. I don't, I have no idea how the Falkland Islands got coronavirus. I mean, like, I don't, I just don't understand that at all. Who goes there? I mean, who, literally, who goes to the Falkland Islands? They, no one visits that place. It's so remote. Uh, next up, we have the Faroe Islands, which I totally understand why they got the virus. They're kind of in the middle of Europe. <clears throat> they certainly have enough economic activity for that to make sense. Uh, about 50,000 people live in the Faroe Islands, and 187 of those people have recovered from the coronavirus. Zero of them still have it. Zero have died from it. Uh, Greenland, the other territory of Denmark, had 11 cases of coronavirus, all of which have recovered. In fact, Greenland was the very first country to report going from having an active case to not having any active cases. It was the first country to basically have the virus, and get rid of the virus. So good for you, Greenland. Uh, Plague Inc. players know why Greenland is a tricky one for a pandemic to get. Uh, moving on, though, we have the overseas French collectivity of St. Pierre and Miquelon, right off the coast of Newfoundland in Canada. This is still a French-speaking piece of France. This is literally France. Like, it is a territory, of, by all measures, of France. It has about 6,000 people. Uh, apparently, one person here got it, and they're fine now. Uh, another place that only had one case. Oh, there aren't any. My bad. But any, <laughs> anyway, the only other countries remaining are Papua New Guinea, which had eight cases. It is now dwindled down to zero because Papua New Guinea did a very, very good job closing off their country and isolating the people that did get the virus. And we have uh, St. Lucia. St. Lucia is this country right here. It is one island, right? Oh, okay, okay, okay. There's two. Okay, there's two or three. It's mostly mostly one island. All right. It's got about 160,000 people. Um, 18 of them were infected with coronavirus. None of them have died, but all 18 have recovered. And uh, I did forget <laughs> one more place. I forgot Saint Bartholomew or Saint Bart's, as it's more easy to pronounce. Saint Bart's would be. Oh, uh, where is Saint Bart's? Is this it? No, that's Barbuda. Silly me. This is it. This is St. Bart's. Yep, St. Bartholomew Island. So St. Bartholomew Island is uh, an overseas territory of the Netherlands. Or no, it's French. It's French. It's a French territory. Um, I do believe it's its own little territory by itself. Uh, I know that these are, like, this is Saba, uh, and this is part of the Netherlands. Saba, and this is Orangestad, so this is probably Curaçao, right? Or no. Oh, no, there's two Orangestads. Orangestad is the capital, Curaçao. That's so, so confusing. This is St. Eustatius, so my bad. Uh, anyway, anyway, St. Bartholomew, they recorded six cases of it. None of them died. All of them recovered. St. Bart's is pretty much like a rich people's playground. It's kind of, I, I guess, I guess you could call it like the Monaco of the Caribbean, but I don't think that's, that really paints the whole picture. But anyway, um, it would appear that we have run out of places to talk about, so... Yeah, let's. I'm just going to leave this. If you guys have watched this far, uh, I appreciate it. If I'm going to leave this with uh, one thing. North Korea and Turkmenistan almost certainly do have cases of coronavirus. They're just run by dictatorships that are incredibly repressive and refuse to admit fault. So they don't want to look like they let their citizens get the coronavirus. Not only that, they're not even letting the World Health Organization come in and check. And they both both countries have quarantined several of their citizens and diplomats. And the, and Turkmenistan even has quarantine camps. So they definitely have it. 
These far-flung Pacific Island nations, I would highly doubt have the disease, but at the same time, it's entirely possible. Uh, it's very unfortunate what happened in the Solomon Islands with the shipwreck and what what's going on in Vanuatu with the cyclone ravaging the country and international foreign aid can't come and donate it. I mean, donate to it because they don't want to get the virus. It's just really messed up. Uh, a lot of overseas territories still have yet to report the virus, which is not super surprising to me. But interestingly enough, American Samoa is one of them. Um, and yeah, and, and guys, if I didn't mention a country, that means that it has active cases of coronavirus. So if, if whatever country you are thinking of or whatever country you live in wasn't mentioned, that means that it has coronavirus. And unfortunately, that's the reality that our globe is facing at the moment. Even war-torn Yemen is dealing with coronavirus. Syria is dealing with it. Even the isolated Bhutan. I mean, y y somehow Cabo Verde even got the coronavirus. It's just, it's just a really messy kind of pretty scary situation but uh you know hang in there everybody and uh hopefully this is all over over sooner rather than later but yeah so this has been what countries do not have any cases of coronavirus and which ones have recovered so i hope you guys enjoyed hopefully i'll be making another video soon i i have more than enough time to make them and yeah i'll catch you on the flippy flip